Hello everyone, welcome. Um, for today's objective, we're going to determine if the 2x10 joys are adequate to support the given loads. The given loads that we have here is a 12 pound square feet for the dead load and the lab load is going to be for 40 pound square feet. The, the member is a number 2 Douglas fir for the joist and lateral buckling is prevented so it's, there's, from power, some, there's probably some blocking or bridging. The joist is used in drive service conditions and at normal temperatures. So that means there are some of the factors that say for the CT factor for temperature is going to be one. The CM factor for moisture is going to be also one. Um, the joists here are, are spaced at 16 inches on center. So our CR factor, our repetitive factor is going to be 1.15. And then our size factor, because we're using 2 by 10s it's going to be 1.1. But I'll show you guys, uh, at least for the size factor, where to get that on the tables. So again, our, on our left side over here, we have a plan view of, of the building or the house here. We have a floor system, first floor system. The joists are, again, spaced at 16 inches on center. is being supported by a girder over here. And then the girder itself is being supported by lattice columns. And then the, the loads will eventually transfer to the foundation. All right, uh, here we have a section of the joist. The joist is approximately 10 feet in length and knowing the loads the length of the joist and the trip width which is going to be 1.33 if we convert the 16 inches on the 16 inches to feet with that we we're, we're going to be able to calculate for the maximum moment we're able to calculate for maximum shear and then using the young, young modulus of number two Douglas fur we're going to also calculate for the deflection and see if the deflection is for dead dead and live all, uh, all over 240 or greater or for the live load if the live the deflection is um, greater than all over 360 for live so let's let's do this so here again we have our joist our length is again approximately 10 feet our dead load is 12 our live load, it's going to be 40, 40 pounds square feet. We have a trip width. Our trip width is 1.33. With that, we're able to convert this because of 12 and the 40 is in pounds square feet. We're able to convert that into pounds linear feet. So let's do that. So we have 12 times 1.33. It's going to give us approximately 16 pounds linear feet. And 40 times 1.33 is going to give us a pro um, it's going to give us 53.2 pounds linear feet. That being said, we're going to use uh, ASD. So our load combo is going to be dead plus live. Uh, again, dead is 16 plus 53.2. When you add those those two together, we're going to get uh, I think 69.2 pounds linear feet having that this is going to be our w having w now we could use a max maximum moment is equal to wl squared over a we have a simple supported beam over here so uh 69.2 times 10 squared divided by a it's going to give us maximum moment Maximum shear is going to be WL over 2, 69.2 times 10 uh, over 2. Um, doing that, we're going to get our maximum moment, maximum shear. So just give me a few seconds so I could just plug this in the calculator. So again, 69.2 times 10 squared divided by 8. It's going to give us 865 for our maximum moment. pounds feet and 69.2 times 10 divided by 2 is going to give us 345 pounds so we have our maximum moment maximum shear and now let's see uh, what is the capacity of the 2 by 10s 2 by 10 joys that are Douglas for number 2 so let's continue so let's just write down some of the stuff that we just calculated so the maximum moment is a 65 
you know, maximum shear VMAX is 345 pounds. Again, like I, like I was saying earlier, our beam stability factor is going to be 1.0 because uh, lateral buckling is being, is prevented. Uh, the CR factor, repetitive factor, is going to be 1.15 because the joists are spaced at 16 inches on center, which is less than 24 inches on center. Uh, our duration, not that, our duration factor, is going to be 1.0 because we only have dead plus live. That's it. We don't have snow or it's not wind or construction live loads. So we're going to use just the duration factor of 1. Uh, let's see what else. RCM factor, moisture factor is going to be 1.0. And our temperature factor is going to be also 1.0. Oh, and last but not least, we have our size factor. Our size factor is going to be 1.1. I'll show you guys where to get that. So the 1.1, uh, we have 2 by 10s against the size factor, 2 by 10s. So we have 2, we have 10, so we're going to get 1.1. So that's how you do it. Okay, for that being said, we have our 2 by 10. Remember, our section modulus is B, D, squared over 6. If I draw the member over here pretty bad so draw it over here a member this is D that's B anyways our B for a 2 by 10 is 1.5 our D is 9.25 it's gonna be square we we'll divide that by six, and that's gonna give us our section modulus of the two by tens. So, one point five times nine point two five divided by well times nine point two five. Again, divided by six is gonna give us twenty one point three. Twenty one point three nine inches to the third. We're gonna use the size or well, the the factors over here, we're gonna we're gonna use one point one five for the repetitive factor. We're gonna use one point one for the size factor, and it's gonna increase our section modulus. Well, not really increase it, but what what I'm actually let me let me say it correctly. I'm not increasing the section modulus because the geometry of the two by ten does not change. What I am changing though is the bending stress of the allowable bending stress for a Douglas for a large number two. So. The bending stress is 900 psi, so I'm gonna multiply that by 1.15 and multiply that by 1.1, and we're increasing the bending stress. So 900 times 1.15 times 1.1 is gonna give us 1,138. Let's say 39, because it ends at a, ends at 0.5 psi. Now that we have that, we're going to multiply that, 1339 PSI times um, 21.39. Uh, it's going to give us the moment in pounds inch. So let's do that. And we're going to get 24,000 something, something, something pounds inch. When I was, we're going to convert that by dividing that by 12. I'm going to convert that to pounds feet. So we're going to get 2,030 pounds feet, which is greater than 865 pounds feet. So that's good. Uh, next, what we're going to do, we're going to check for shear. So for a moment, it passes. I'm going to check for shear. I'm going to write it down again. All right. Uh, shear that we're getting is 365 pounds so then we have v equals to 3v over 2a so f v times 2a divided by 3 is going to give us 
uh, allowable shear for the 2 by 10s so let me go back so to show you what FV is for a Douglas for number 2 well, it's going to be 180 so 180 KSI times 2 times the area so 1.5 times 9.25 divided by 3 is going to give us the allowable shear so plug that in the calculator 180 times 2 times 1.5 times 9.25 divide that by 3 it's going to give us 1605 and I don't have to adjust the shear with the factors that I have so that's good enough so 165 excuse me 1665 pounds it's greater than 365 so that's good last but not least now we have to check for uh, deflection so I don't have much space so I'm gonna write down the deflection equation actually I might just do the I require so I require it's gonna be 5 times W L Q over 384 E times 240 this is for dead plus live and I think what was it 69.2 we're gonna divide that by 12 because we want to convert that to pounds inch pounds per inch the length is 10 times that by 12 we want to convert the 10 feet into inches to the third power divide that by 384 divided by the young modulus and we'll go back one more time the young modulus for number two i think is 1600 ksi Then last but not least, we're gonna multiply that all by 240. It's gonna give us the I, the inertia required for a dead plus life for all over 240. Let's see what we got. All right, so we have five times 69.2 divide that by 12 times that by 120 to the third power. We're going to divide that by 384. We're going to divide that by uh, 1,600,000. Then we're going to multiply that by 240. We get 19.46. And then the inertia for 2 by 10 is uh, 1.5 times 9.25 cube divided by 12 so let's see what we got 98.9 so that's much that's very that's much much more greater than um than the 19.46 but i'm just going to show you how to get uh for only live load now i, I require for live so we have 19.46 we're going to multiply that by 36 over 24 so we're getting rid of the 240 and we're multiplying by 360 and now we have to multiply it by the percentage decrease of loading. So originally it was 69.2. But now we only have live load, which is 53.2. Doing so is going to give you the inertia, the required inertia for live. Uh, it's going to be 19.46 times 36 divided by 24 times 52.3 divided by 
We got 22.06. So again, the 98.96, well, 0.9, it's much greater than even for the 22.06. So let me do a quick recap of what we did. Oh, excuse me. All right, quick recap. So we have a floor system here, first floor system. We have a joist. The joist is approximately 10 feet in length. The joists are also span. Um, excuse me, the, uh, the joists are 16 inches on center and the dead load and live load is 12 and 40 pounds square feet respectively. We get a maximum moment, we get a maximum shear. Once we have that, we want to know the uh, uh, capacity of the 2 by 10 Douglas for number 2 moment for the moment and also the, the shear capacity. So for the moment capacity, uh, we got 2030, which is greater than 865. And then for the shear capacity, I believe it was like around 1000. I think I erased it already. It was like around, okay, it's 1665, which is greater than 345 pounds. Last but not least, we got the required inertia for dead plus live and the required inertia for uh, live only. And the live uh, controls 22.06, but it's still less than 98.9. So that's, in the end, that's how you design for the joist or find out if the 2x10s are strong enough for the anticipated loads. It's good for moment, it's good for shear, it's good for deflection. I mean, there's other things you could check. You could check for bearing, but that's not, uh, right now I'm not focusing on that. So hopefully you guys were able to get something about this, and, uh, how to use this, the factors in order to get the capacity of the joist moment share and also get the serviceability for the joist thank you and have a good day